As an example, let's create a new file as part of our project, a new VI. In this VI, let's just create a very simple program. We're going to take a numeric control and a numeric indicator. We'll call them input and output. We're going to just create an increment function and just define the output to be the input plus one. Next, we're going to show the connector on our front panel and be sure to link both the input control and the output indicator onto our connector. Next, we're going to save this into our subvi's directory. Just call it increment.vi. Now, when we return to our project screen, we see that increment is listed here as part of our project. Next, let's create a new build specification. We right-click on Build Specifications and choose New Shared Library. This looks almost identical to when we build an executable. The difference here is that when we add a source file, such as increment, we're presented with a new pop-up screen. This screen allows us to define the VI prototype. In this way, we specify exactly how increment function is going to be called by an external program. And notice here how we have listed the return value and the input. In our parameters list box, we have listed everything that's been linked to our connector. So we have our return value, which is linked to the VI output called output. And we have an input, which is linked automatically to our VI input called input. There's different parameter types, whether it's input or output or input output. And we can also choose whether we pass by value or pointer to value. We can also specify whether we're using C calling or standard calling conventions. Whenever we're building DLLs, defining the VI prototype is very important. We must very carefully make sure that everything has been linked properly, otherwise it can result in significant errors when trying to run. All of the rest of the settings, as mentioned, are exactly the same as we see when we are building an executable. Let's specify the destination path to be the same as what we've done up to this point. We're going to create a new directory called DLL build. Select that folder. Just leave everything else as default. Let's go ahead and build this now. And then when it's done, we click done. And now if we return to the my project directory under DLL build, we see that we have a shared library .dll as well as the .h and other relevant files to the DLL build. One last thing to mention, if we were to go ahead and modify our installer settings, go to the properties, we observe that we can also add from our source files a DLL to be installed into any one of these directories. So we can build an installer using the exact same procedure we talked about in the previous section, but instead of just installing an EXE, we can also install a DLL.